Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five, filmed right here in the heart of Times Square in the historic Brill Building. Welcome in. I, it is Tuesday, October 22nd, and I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. And I'm Beth Stevens. And we are joined here, as always, by the marvelous Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And we have a wonderful friend and a very special guest with us today. Who we do we have? Do. We have Kristen Stokes from the yes. Lightning Thieves. Yes. Woo. Did you know, notice Caitlin wore her lightning bolt I earring? Did. Look at that. I did. Mm -hmm. I wore these at the press event. I'm wearing them today. She's it's a ready. Theme. So on brand. <laughs> uh, we are talking uh, to Kristen about the lightning thief and so much more. But first, let's talk about today's top five. Someone is coming to the rock on Broadway from tour. Mm. Yes, yes. Welcome to the rock Becky Gulsvig, yes. who will be taking over the role of Beverly Bass from original cast member Jen Colella in Come From Away on the Broadway. Yes, Jen. She's been there. She's been there for three yeah, years. Absolutely. So she's going to move on, and Becky Gulsvig is going to come in. You can hear her sing on the site if you click on that yes. news story. She will begin her performances on November 12th, and Jen will play her final performance on November 10th. Very exciting. Very, Very exciting. Cool. Welcome, Becky. And we have a bunch of casting information for the upcoming Broadway play, Grand Horizons. Yes, this is Bess Wall's Grand Horizons. Uh, it is a second stage production. And we found out that Jane Alexander and James Cromwell will be returning to Broadway as a married couple at the center of the play. Um, it is directed by Tony nominee Lee Silverman. You may know Jane Alexander. She won a Tony Award for The Great White Hope, of course, but she's also received two Emmy Awards, and four Oscar nominations. Nice. So yeah, she's kind of talented. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, James Cromwell is an Emmy winner for American Horror Story and an Oscar nominee for Babe. Oh my gosh, remember <gasps> Babe? Babe? Oh, I loved Babe, some pig. Um, he was also been on Broadway in Hamlet and Othello and off-Broadway in the three acts of recognition. Thomas Sadowski has uh, left the production because of scheduling conflicts, and we will find out a replacement for him to be announced soon. Uh, also in this cast are Priscilla Lopez, Ashley Park, Michael Yuri, and Malik Pancholi. Uh, previews will begin on December 20th, 2019, and it will officially open on January 23rd. What a cast. Yeah. What a Stars. Cast. And we are going to get to hear the music of the newly opened theatrical concert experience forever. Guys, if you haven't seen American Utopia, the David Byrne experience, that's not that's what they're weird. calling it. That's not what they're <laughs> but calling you know it. What it. At is. the Hudson <laughs> Theater, get yourself there. I call it marching band chic. Because oh, yeah. they carry oh, their yeah. instruments. Mm -hmm. It's good. And it's wonderful, and it's going to have an original cast recording. It's already streaming. You can listen to it in the earbuds. But if you want a two CD version, that will be released on None Such Records on November 22nd. So good. None Such Records. I None love such. that name. <laughs> Yes, and Broadway's original OBGYN is coming back for the last time. <laughs> I love talking about the OBGYN, <laughs> don't you? Oh, we, sorry. We are talking about Drew Galing, who is currently in Almost Famous at the Old Globe. Uh, so Almost Famous, he will be done uh, with that production on October 27th. And then on October 30th, three days after he's done that, he will be returning to Broadway's Waitress as Dr. Pometer, of course. And he will be with the show until its closing on January 5th. Tier. I will miss Not my a real waitress. doctor, guys. Not a real doctor. Um, <laughs> the cast of Waitress right now is led by Jordan Sparks, of course, and she will be playing Jenna through November 24th. Also in that production right now are Al Roken, Natasha Yvette Williams, Caitlin Houlihan, and Christopher Fitzgerald. I don't have to tell you to go see Some Waitress. Some original guys. cast members. Yeah, exactly. Like, Waitress is special. Go see Waitress. Absolutely. Yes. And the time has come to start getting ready to say goodbye to Dunder Mifflin. Again. 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 <laughs> the Office, exclamation point, a musical parody, mm -hmm. is going to be closing. And it will play its final performance on January 13th, 2020, at the Orbach Theater, at the Theater Center, on September 20th, 2018, is mm -hmm. when it began. So it's been yes. running for yeah, a, been while. a while. Yeah, we interviewed the star right That's here on right. Live at Yes, yeah. we did. At the time of its closing, it will have played... 402 performances. That is respectable. That is absolutely. Mm -hmm. Very respectable. It's written by Bob and Toby McSmith. 
go see the office, you have until January 13th. You do. Also, on the site, there are some really cool things. We uh, did another character study with Clinton Greenspan. He is Aladdin. So when you log on to our homepage and you see 10 abs staring at you, <laughs> those You're are counted. Clinton Greenspans. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. It's, it's, it, he puts a lot of work into that. <laughs> and Aladdin uh, doesn't get to wear a shirt. No, so exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it the makes best. Sense. The it whole makes show. Sense. Yeah, they're there for a reason. Uh, <laughs> episode three of Behind the Stripes with Andrew Barth Feldman. His vlog is up, up right you now. Get to meet his vocal coach. Yes, Liz that's Catherine. right. Right. He is a great vlogger, by the way. Vlogging oh, yeah. is difficult, and he's fantastic at Enthusiastic. it. Enthusiastic. We yes. love that. He's so good. And um, there was a Jagged Little Pill press event that yep. you were at, Caitlin Moynihan. I exciting was. stuff. It was yeah. really. It's so exciting. I can't It's wait. happening. I'm so excited. It's happening. So you can uh, check out all of our stuff in that press event, photos, and all of that. Beth, thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to go join all the Percy Jackson fans that are going to watch this yes. interview. Yes, yes. Caitlin, would you be so kind as to tell us a little bit more about today's guest? Gladly. Yes, we got Miss Kristen Stokes here with us today. She is currently on a killer quest as Annabeth in the Lightning Thief, colon, the Percy Jackson musical on the Broadway. This marks her Broadway debut, but she's no stranger to this story because she did it off-Broadway, she did it on tour, and now she's here on Broadway, and we have so much to talk about because the show just opened last week. Make sure you follow her on social media sh- social media at chitty underscore balone i think i pronounced that correctly she's nodding her head i did leave all of your questions in the comments below and everyone please welcome Kristen and ryan hello Kristen. Hello, ryan. it's so wonderful to have you I'm here i'm so excited to be here well it, it is a thrill having you here also what is thrilling is the lightning thief the percy jackson musical you <gasps> yes. are here on broadway as caitlin mentioned the show just opened mm-hmm. how are things over at the theater how are you enjoying your Broadway debut, alongside so many people making their Broadway debut. It's a very exciting, exciting thing. Oh my gosh, it's so exciting. It's so uh, magical. Yeah. It's so magical to be a part of the Broadway community and to come to work every day mm-hmm. and just to be with all the people that I love. We've been doing this show, you know, off Broadway. Um, me, Chris McCarroll, Sarah Beth Pfeiffer, and James Hayden Rodriguez right. are from the original off Broadway cast. We all tour together, we added on our new um, company company members mm-hmm. and you know we're just like one big camp it, it feels like yeah. when we were on tour we're like this is a literal quest <laughs> we are in summer camp we would like right. go to our hotel rooms be like what are you wearing what are you watching blah, blah, blah. and now we get to be on broadway it's just the most fun it's so cool and like yeah you've been involved since the very beginning since like yeah. the workshop yes. of this right uh, yes. so what was it about this project or this character or who was involved mm-hmm. that really made you excited to be a part of it I think a few things. One, um, Stephen Brackett, who's the director, he Absolutely. was the one who originally thought to even call me in for this workshop. Um, and so thank you, Stephen. Had you worked um, with him before? Yes, that, okay. yes. We did another new musical called The Trouble with Doug. Oh, okay. Um, and it was very strange and kind of like dark comedy and um, very weird. And we just had a ball working <laughs> yeah. together. And then like a year and a half later, I had a phone call and I was like, how did these people get my number? What is this? I don't even know what this show is. And then in like runs Steven and he's like, hi, you're a demigoddess and you're really tough. Love you. And I was all like, oh, okay. Well, sold. Steven's here. So I'm here. I'm done. I'm sold. Um, and so Steven and, you know, the rehearsal room is just so fun. We just have so many laughs, the tone and all the creativity that gets put into this project. Right. It's just the most fun every time. And, you know, this role in this character is like really really close to my heart. Yeah. She's so amazing and tough and this character has taught me so much and I, there's every time I come back to her there's just more work and more deepening and more things that I'm learning about myself and it's it's just such a wonderful role. Right. I know that since you've become involved you've had a chance to you've read the entire series, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. So yes. what what do you what did you end up appreciating most about these my husband teaches 6th grade and his students oh, are obsessed then you know. with these <laughs> books. Yes. Stop. They're obsessed with them. That's <laughs> all they talk about. Yes. And I think, I'm sure they're the people that are engaging online because, I yes. mean, like, the kids are absolutely floored with this, yeah. with this story and these. What did you end up really uh, being inspired by with this story? What did you enjoy most about it after you had read it? I think I just enjoy, one of the things that really appealed to me when reading these books is Rick Riordan, who's the author. Yeah. He does this really fantastic job of kind of, like, presenting the character and immediately you're like, oh, I know this girl. She's 
blonde, she has curly hair, and they say she looks like a princess. And mm-hmm. you're like, oh, dumb blonde princess ingenue. And he takes every character and like kind of gives an intro like that and then turns it on his head. And right. you're like, oh, actually, Annabeth is a badass. And she's the <laughs> right. smartest person in the room by far and the toughest. Absolutely. And like you want her on your team. She is first picked for every sport and everything. So I just really love that about these books. And that, you know, it's really special. The tone and the humor that is captured in the book mm-hmm. and that I think we capture in our show is so fun. It just takes itself seriously enough. And then right when you're like, oh, wow, this is some like really deep like storytelling, you know, yeah. broken homes and and family and who is my real family and, you know, um, dyslexia and ADHD and monsters and people getting killed and some serious stuff and then you're like you know oh and then she got sprayed with toilet water right. you know what I mean it's still <laughs> right, through the right. mind of a 12 year old boy and sure. he's like you know half bloods and so it just is really fun and like you know superhero sci-fi whatever but then also has some like really deep messages yeah and the way that you're all telling this story is really cool too mm. like there's just a, there's such a spirit of adventure and yeah. you know like this sort of scrappy we've pulled this whole thing together yes and, you know, like how much fun was it and then the, the fight scenes in this they are so creatively yeah. done what was it like to sort of break all of that ground and get through all of that oh my god like you, you feel like a superhero up there I mean I by the end of the show you're like we really just did that you guys this <laughs> This is not just like magical stagecraft. We are really fighting with right, swords. Right. We are really running around and climbing up scaffolding. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. and there's something to like really going through that together. And it does feel like we're kind of breaking ground. I mean, I don't know if I can think of a musical that is like rock and music. It's this right. epic, you know, very traditional hero's journey type of story. And, you know, has the fighting and all that kind of stuff. You know, and it, I mean, it's very of the times with all the you know, Avengers and all the, totally. these type of movies and Star Wars. And it's that same type of thing. And it's like, yeah, break into musical theater. It Absolutely. should be. Absolutely. Speaking of, I know that um, you trained um, in California, yes. right? You went yes. To, what, so did you um, did you always know you wanted to do this? Or did you always know you wanted to be a performer? Absolutely. I um, My mom was really big into theater. She did it in like high school and, you know, college. Right. And um, she's the one that kind of got me into it. We were always listening to musicals in the car and I don't know it was it was honestly a lot of people had that story of like I saw this production in high school and that's when I knew and I'm like no I just there was never a second thought Mm. I was just Mm. it was always just a part of my life and my upbringing and you know I did my first like professional show with like adults I think when I was like nine or eight Mm. and it really was huge for me because I was like oh wow these are adults but like they're not the adults that I know. They're still having fun. They're still creative. And it really broke that barrier of like me versus them. I was like, oh no, we're all creating together. And like, yeah, why not do this for the rest of my life? Right, and right. That was just kind of it. Who were um, who were the original sort of um, performers that had an influence on you? Or what mm. were some of the shows or songs that really sort of built up the bedrock of you yeah. wanting to become a performer? Um, Bernadette Peters. Huge Absolutely. Bernie fan. Yes, I no, love yes. her. <laughs> oh my God. Gosh, anything that she's done, obviously, um, big Sondheim fan as sure, well, yeah. and Bernie and Sondheim, Match Made in Heaven, <laughs> Sunday in the Park with George, I would listen to like every day, mm. Sweeney Todd, um, Judy Kuhn and Chess is yes, like incredible, okay. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, a lot of a lot of those types right. of shows, and, and then also like rock musicians like Jeff Buckley. You know his absolutely. range and the way he sings and mixes. I mean, that was a whole new level of of thought and thinking about vocalization for me, listening to someone like him. Sure. So. Remind me again, where did you grow up? I grew up in Fremont, California, which okay. is like a suburb of the San Francisco Bay Area. Gotcha. So big part of the Bay Area theater scene. Got it. And so you did you always think about moving to New York City, or did you plan on staying in California? No, I think, you know, I I, I came over to New York um, for like a little like Broadway trip with me, my friends and like our moms Mm -hmm. uh, when I was in eighth grade and everyone jokes because I'm still friends with all those friends and um, they always joke that they're like, yeah, Kristen was so weird because I also have ADD and so usually I'm like, (laughs) whatever and they were like, we got to New York and Kristen was like, we were like on the red tour bus and I'd be like, shh. Nicole, stop talking. Because I was like <laughs> listening to the facts and they were like, it was the weirdest thing. You were like studying the yeah. city. And I didn't feel like I was, but I also was like, no, I'm going to be here one day. So I need to like make sure. 
right. I'm like on point. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So weird. No, uh, I want to open it up. Yes. I'm sure we have a lot of people watching and listening around. What would they we like to know? do. Okay. So Charlie has a question and Charlie wants to know, when you were younger, did you ever want to experience an adventure like the ones that the trio goes on in the Percy Jackson, the Olympian series? Oh my gosh. Yes. My husband and I talk about this all the time. <laughs> like I want, I would watch those movies and be like, yes. I want to have crazy adventures. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. I would be my, the student that rescues my high school. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And I think yes. that was like part of like my being too of like, you know, like when can I be the hero right, right. now? You know what I mean? Exactly. Like I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. You guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. What were some of the like series, either books or a TV movie that you were into when you were in middle school and high school? Like what were, mm -hmm. oh my gosh. what were you plugged into? What was I plugged into? I mean, uh, just like, I can't even think of like TV series stuff. I used to watch like so many like reruns of like <laughs> weird shows. I was like obsessed with Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Yes, okay. Obsessed with The Matrix. Mm -hmm. Obsessed with Austin Powers. Avatar of the Last Yes, Avenger. yes. Oh my God, Sailor Moon. <laughs> yes. Every day of my life watching Sailor Moon reruns. Like, so yeah. this, so it makes sense that I'm like in Lightning Thief. I'm just hearkening back to like my Crouching Tiger, Sailor Moon. Like, mm -hmm. ah, Moon Power. Like, if I could do that every day, I will. Absolutely. Get me a sci-fi show, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Love that. Here That's for everybody dream. listening, yes. give her a call. Yes, also, Can I have a she's here. Show? Thank and go you. in to watch Sailor Moon. Yes. yes. I, yes. I can't <laughs> recommend Sailor Moon enough. Yeah. I love that. So Justine wants to know, how does it feel to be able to have been able to play Annabeth through all the different iterations of this show? Mm. And, makes, and what makes you want to continue to play her after all these years? You know, I think kind of what I was saying earlier, she's, she's taught me so much. I think, you know... Uh, and I think like how our society is starting to like awaken and mm. develop it. She's like very along those lines, you know, I think when I first approached her, I saw someone who was like pretty hard spoken mm. and rough. And I worked hard to kind of soften those edges about her. Cause mm. I was like, Oh, I don't want her to be annoying or imposing or, and that's, I had to learn to that that was kind of like society's teachings right. of how mm -hmm. like tough girls are like you're annoying if you keep kind of saying the right things mm -hmm. or why don't you take a step back or whatever and so I had to learn to be like you know what she's actually great I need to learn how mm -hmm. to not have that tendency to cover up or sure. make her more palatable she's actually beautiful and palatable as she is and so I've gotten you know so much deeper within myself and her journey and just like you know, she just like says things as as they are. They're not like in a snotty way. She's just factual and right. Right. Yeah. And because as we were mentioning earlier, there, there because there are already so many dedicated fans to this story and to mm -hmm. these characters. What kind of interactions have you had with uh, the families and the young people that have come to the show, either at stage mm -hmm. door or what? What are some of the reac reactions you've gotten from these? It's so incredible. I see people all different types of ages, male, female, in between, you yeah. know, these like little girls who are like, this is my first theater performance and like you're my favorite. And then, you know, other people are just like, I know I'm too old to be saying this, but like, <laughs> I love you and you're my favorite. And like, I've been reading these books forever. And, you know, parents who are like, you are, you know, my son and daughter's like, favorite character and mm. thank you for being a good role model and it's just so exciting all the yeah. fans who come and just everyone who it, it's cool that they see Annabeth you know because mm. it's I mean it's Percy's story right. and I'm really lucky that the writers chose to kind of give Annabeth her point of view especially in act two with my song Grand Plan right. and it really seems to be resonating with a lot of people and that is so exciting. Absolutely. Kudos to you and that whole team. Yes. Well yeah. So a lot of people want to know, you know, you talked about earlier how you guys are like really fighting, using swords and stuff. Yes. They want to know what happens when maybe things don't go as planned. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Live what? theater. Live <laughs> theater. Lord, the bruises on my legs right now tell the story of they this They tell show. your story. Yeah. They tell my story. That's why we tell the story. Um, oh, gosh. We've had so many injuries. I can't tell you how many times my finger 
fingers have gotten smashed and put in your place when we have we have these like spears that we're like using the first night of previews on tour I like broke a rib like oh goodness. literally and then was just like it's fine let's just tape it and keep going so we, would keep going yeah yeah so basically the answer is we keep going um wow. we wow. just like you know muscle through and right and just it's all par for the course with the, this show. yeah that's why you have to keep up to stuff with those stage combat classes yes. and all yes. of that right yes. I also want to give you a moment to Chris McCarroll as you met has been with this show since the yes. very beginning he is such a I love him he's such a talent he's such a wonderful guy yeah. how has he been as the sort of uh, captain of this ship since the very beginning oh with all gosh. of you guys What's amazing it? he's been absolutely incredible you know he got onto this project for the off-Broadway version and just like totally dived in he was like at, at first he was kind of like why do we have tp guns like what is this show but then after we had like our first preview he was like oh, i get it and i'm in and i trust and ever since then he has just been you know he really is like captaining the ship and is such a cheerleader for this show mm -hmm. and believes in it so much and you know we do everything we can just to uplift our show because we both love it so much. Right. And, and Chris is just such a doll. Love him right. so much. And what do and the and the score to this show mm -hmm. I think is so fantastic too. Just the, the sort of t the type of rock that it's yes, doing in the yes. show. Do you have a favorite song to uh, either sing or listen to? What mm -hmm. what was the first song that sort of stuck in your mind as the one that really got you excited about? Oh my gosh! I mean, it changes day to day, but I think what continues to be my favorite song, and I think everyone in the cast's favorite song is the finale, Bring on the Monsters. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's so fun. Song. It's epic, <laughs> it it's is. so epic. Yeah. And you need that to finish this you like totally. odyssey of a show. And it's like, we all have been through so much on stage and in the story and we're sweating and we're like, <laughs> oh God. And but then no matter what, it always just like uplifts us. It gives us that last push to make it through the end. Yeah. And we all, all our musical themes come in and we're looking at each other and we're like, yes, we're doing it. And it's, it's like the most fun to sing. It totally is. Yeah. It's amazing. The band is rocking. The they band's are. incredible. <laughs> they like, are. It's such a blast. Well, Kristen, thank you so much for yeah. coming by and chatting with us. Thank and you. make sure you go see The Lightning Thief. The Percy Jackson musical is playing at Broadway's Long Acre Theater. You have until January 5th of 2020 to go see the show, so do not waste any time. Uh, remind them again where they can follow you and your adventures yes, online. Yes, yes. You can follow me on Instagram, at Chitty Balone. Hey. You said it correct. I know, thank it's you. very weird. Um, and then on Twitter, at K underscore stoked. Amazing, amazing. Thank you again so much. Thank it's so, so wonderful much, having you. Of thank course, you. Caitlin, you. would you please take us out? Yes, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at five every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you listen to your podcast by searching for hashtag live at five and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. Talk to Lisa O'Hare from the height of the storm.